It's another evening of Museum in Lotus, uh, episode 6. Time passed Time so passed. fast, huh? Uh, once again, I have with me Mr. Giuseppe Din Joseph, Mr. Pino. Yes. Uh, because as we know, Lotus and Water, we sell collections. They are first hand feng shui collections from the earth to the covers directly into your hands. Uh, and then, but there are a lot of other collections in the gallery that is very worthy of valuing and appreciating. You know, six episodes, five episodes, the sixth one. We have learned so much, huh? So that's why we have Mr. Pino with us to actually explain about it. And me, I'm going to connect it with Master Jane's art, our different collections, so you can see. Because the things that we're going to talk about in this, se this series, you cannot buy. Okay, a lot of people have been asking me about how much is this thing, huh? Five episodes, what have we covered so far? Uh, first episode, we did that the Indian dowry chest. The Indian dowry? Indian dowry chest. So there was India. Yes. Second, the Kerala lamb. Second is the Kerala Look at the lamb. There are still people who are placing their rings there. But it's it, amazing. I mean, yeah. th th this is uh, an exquisite piece uh, yes. of Kerala lamb. It holds uh, so much value. It has so much spiritual value. And I can figure out till m this moment that people going around absorbing the beautiful energy. This was, was for festivity. Yes. It was about light over darkness. Uh, Again, it was good things against bad things. Something we need very much. We need it every this single day. This couple of days. years, huh? Yeah, and <laughs> every single day. Every single so day. So second episode, we did the Kerala lamb, which once again, reminder, we are going to use that lamb uh, on winter solstice, which is 21st of December. And counting down to that date, actually today is the 16th. That means that uh, we have one month plus five days. Correct. Probably about 35, 36 days. So if you want to get your rings, better get it ready. On that day, you're going to get you get a full thing, the, 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 you get your rings there, and I counted, there are only 91 slots. Because there are seven trays, yes. seven layers, each layer only has so many places for the light wicks to be. Correct. And uh, in total, there are 91. So the 91 rings that uh, comes in first, we will place it there. After it's been blessed, we will remove it, and then we would send it out. We would light it, cleanse away the darkness. Cancel away the darkness. Third episode, we went to... Uh, Tibet. We did the Tibetan uh, monastery chest, 14th, 15th century. We did, did that uh, Tibetan uh, chest, which the Indian Dari chest and the Tibetan chest both has Master Yun's unfinished artworks Correct. in it. Uh, we, also had, we also had that nice iron container. <laughs> Beautiful iron container with so many details, uh, really aristocratic. Enjoyed the, we used it as a long Paris champagne uh, ice bucket. Yes. Uh, everyone loved it very much. Apparently, it conducts cold or conduct temperature really well. Yes. Super cold after the champagne was. So that is something we did on the fourth episode, uh, third episode. Fourth episode, what do you do? We also did uh, the bells. Uh, we did the... Um, the, um, the bells? That was the, the first bells, episode. Uh, that this was, India. this, this yeah. was worth the... Um, Indian with the chest. chest. With the chest. Very beautiful. India, India, uh, Tibet. Fourth episode. What do we do? Huh? I suddenly don't remember. What did we do last week? No. Oh, fourth episode, we did the... Ah! <laughs> Burmese. Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I got yes. to write this down when we go on to the 15th episode. So we went to Burma, went to Burma to do the medicine puddha mainly. Yes. Right, the few. Actually, there were two medicine puddha. One was what we call uh, uh, sikam, uh, Sikamuni. The okay. hand was touching Correct. the ground. So we went to Burma. And then uh, the sculptures are still in the gallery now. We're still having the Sunok, Sunok and the Sunwet yes. for you to offer flowers on 1st and 15th of Lunar Month, which, by the way, this coming Friday, it's a 15th of the Lunar Month. Right. And uh, that's why we have something that's new here today, which we'll explain. And last episode, definitely, we were talking about this favorite chairs that we have here. Uh, the Qing Dynasty chairs, probably of 150 or more uh, years. And uh, many, many friends actually came over here to relieve the life of aristocrat kings and queens. And many of them walked away with a bottle of 37.5 CL Lohan Perry Champagne. How lovely. For them. How yeah. lovely. Yeah. Beautiful experience for them. I gave out all of them. Yes. I gave out so many of them. So, uh, see, that's why I'm a bit lazy in changing the setting because I thought to move the chairs and they're here. But today we are going to do, we're going to go to somewhere a bit different. Uh, before that, we should say hi to friends who are here. Mike is here. Mike is a friend from Philippines. Hi, Mike. Uh, Betsy, Jefferson, Jim. Jim was here earlier on. 
Uh, Eileen is here. Eileen says, good evening, Mr. Pino and Mr. Khan. Yeah. Good evening. Mr. Yip is here. He says, good evening, Mr. Khan and Mr. Pino, Russell, uh, Geraldine, Eileen, Jewel, and so on. So uh, today we are going to go to another country and take for sure, not for sale, but we're going to connect it. Because date-wise, as I was saying, this Friday is the 15th of lunar month. So it's a key date. Every time it's the 1st and 15th, we should get something ready. Right? Um, well, we have antics here that are uh, going to get Mr. Giuseppe de Giosa to explain, uh, to share with us more about this. One of them from a more familiar terrain. A few of them from a terrain we have never spoke about before. Right. Which one do you want to start with? We can start with uh, this beautiful altar table. Right. Very, very interesting table. This thing. This one. So this, this thing is, is no simple table. This it's, is uh, it's one of the key subjects we are going to talk about today. Absolutely. This is right. an extremely beautiful for many reasons. The condition, the color combination, the kind of carving, and mostly the fact that it was possibly made for an offering to a monastery and possibly for a high lama. Yes. This is my take. Now let's examine... It looks super vibrant on the camera. And it is super vibrant uh, here. When you in look person. at the color combination, it's just incredible. I would say almost intact, vibrant as it was b vibrant in the day that it was right. manufactured and brought to the monastery. Now, a few things I would like immediately to tell you about, and I'm quite excited actually. It's about these four panels that you see here. Okay. Now, we can open them. Oh, it's a shelf. This basically provides a, a container. It's for like a cabinet. A, it's just like a cabinet. And we have two layers. And this we have two layers. There's two panels when you open up. Correct. This is a cabinet. Correct. And there's one more downstairs. And the way it's been fabricated, actually, each of these panels can easily come off. Oh, very... Yes. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. This is the way that it come off. And look at the way that it's been made. Oh. Now, when I look at them, and I hope you can see it uh, clearly, now look ha at uh, the dragons. Uh, look at the way they've been made. These are two dragons uh, opposing themselves, uh, and they're all looking for to get the pearl. The pearl. What is the pearl for? It's for enlightenment. Uh, now, what do they represent? This beautiful, beautiful, in my opinion, this beautiful... Uh, dragons, they represent the protectors uh, of Buddhism. Uh, this is what it means. Uh, right. Now, how was this made and how can I actually touch, as you can touch, uh, Mr. Khan, the texture. skin, the texture. Now, this was something that Tibetan were number one at. In my opinion, this was actually covered, uh, the wood, with glue and with uh, Muslim cloth, which is cotton. After that, they started to apply the various pigments. Uh, and after that, they applied uh, the stucco. And with the stucco, then they created this beautiful resemblance uh, of the skin. That means they were trying to make it feel as if it's the scales of the dragon. Right. If you feel it now, you, go, you can feel it when you're here in the gallery. We're going to place this whole thing. Um, near or next to the dowry chest right. in the last gallery um, and you can feel it because it feels the texture makes it feel like it feels like stingray skin yes people make them in the handbags nowadays you know Absolutely. Right? Yeah, but it yes, feels yes. like that yeah. yes. There's the, yes but that's not stingray it's yes. a particular this is particularly done in a particular way yes the pains that go through to actually make something like that but you know this was the the, the, the labor of love and yeah. even who made this knew what was the purpose and I'm sure that very person was a Buddhist uh, himself right, so sure, yeah. they knew what was the final purpose and then the love otherwise nothing so beautiful Fancy. would have been uh, would have been made right now Look, ha look at the thickness uh, of the wood. Uh, this is basically um, pine wood, soft wood, which would be available in Tibet. Okay. In Tibet, it's very rare to find hardwood. Right. And if found, it possibly would have been imported from other countries and would be used for different purposes. Uh, and I think I've illustrated uh, maybe the second week the, that we did this video a beautiful um, book cover 
yes. which, which was made out of hardwood yes. uh, with a representation of five uh, Buddhas. Th very, was, uh, very beautiful. That is currently in, an, uh, in the Tibetan chest. In the Tibetan chest. Uh, pressing on Master Yin's unfinished works. Right, yeah. right. Now, fin now we look at this and imagine what this can be, my imagination. This is possibly the, the bamboo. And why the bamboo? Absolutely, it looks exactly like bamboo, yeah. Why the bamboo? Resilience. And that is the resilience of the Buddhist uh, faith. So that's what we, okay, so the wood, yes. the wood is from Tibet. Yes. But the symbols, not entirely. Not entirely. Because, I mean, dragons to that extent, and uh, they look a bit Chinese dragon also, and nonetheless. Absolutely. And uh, bamboos, they are nati they're not native to Tibet. They're not native because of the high altitude. Yes. Uh, so what age is this, uh, this is cabinet from? This is 19th century, 1820, 1830s. I would even years. say that it could be earlier than that. But just to be years. prudent, uh, let's call it 1820, 1830s. Uh. Okay. Now, we, 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 we will put this back in a minute. Oh, Let, let's continue. You can be put back, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> I can, by all means, I can. Okay. It's okay, we can put it back later, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to continue with the presentation. Oh, sure, yeah. And then we look at the back all right. of the... Now, beautifully scalloped. Okay. Usually the scallop part would be just on this side here, on the top. Yeah. In this case, it continues. What do we see in the middle? We see the Dharma. The Dharma right. is the teaching of Buddhism and the importance of the teaching. When we look at the Dharma, we basically see a flower that holds. The flower could definitely be the lotus. When we look at the spokes, now we look at eight spokes with alt al altern alternate uh, colors. That's right, yeah. Now, why eight? Again, eight would represent uh, the eight path that yeah. any human being should follow in order to reach enlightenment. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the all idea. Now, when I went to Tibet, and I remember that the first stop in Tibet was in Lhasa, and uh, I basically saw a number of temples uh, at the, at the, on the face, on the top, on the roof, uh, I would see the Dharma right. flanked uh, on both sides by deer. And yes. I could actually not understand the meaning. And then I was told that it represents uh, the Buddha providing the first sermon in a deer park in Sarnath. Yes. Ah, how can I have forgot? Yeah, correct, yeah. Is it? Uh, yes. 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 Yes, 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 yes. And there he was to provide the first sermon. So it's a reminder to the Buddhist that here's the place where you will be provided with the teaching. How wonderful is this concept? How beautiful. So each one goes there with respect to understand and to pass on the teaching to other people. It brings back to the entire origins of the uh, entire Sikamu origin. Anyway. Absolutely, yes. So this cabinet plus table. Yes. What might it be used for 200 years ago? Can I say I can visualize uh, that possibly bowls, okay, incense would be held. We would Here. also, I mean, we would have yeah. in a cup incense yeah. burning. We would have uh, the butter lamp, right. and it would be uh, yak butter to burn. And uh, we would have either paraphernalia, which the high lama would be using uh, for its own rituals. Uh. Which, which means that it's, a, it's an altar table's cabinet. Yes. That it's used to... You know, the items on it, and in, the, in it, it will most likely be the ones that are used for the prayers. So it's a preparation, it's a yes. prayers preparation table. Preparation of the prayers, absolutely, yes. Well, that means that we can, uh, so we are going to definitely put this uh, 200 years old antique there about um, uh, in the dowry chest, Indian dowry chest yes. next to it. And yes. uh, we can offer flowers to it, we can put the, we're going to put the incense on it and so on. So this is exactly what was used for in the past. Yes. Okay, that's amazing. Interestingly, on the side, we can't yes. see it, but on the side, we see 
three pearls, okay? And they're enveloped in fire. Mm. The fire would mean that these are not ordinary jewels. They are very special jewels. What would they mean? The Buddha, the Buddha teaching, it would definitely mean. And thirdly, it would mean the highest level of Buddhism uh, that you can pass on uh, to people. So it's, it's the community at the end, but what they call the Sangha. Oh, what, sangha. What they call, each Buddhist has a duty to protect the other Buddhists. Uh, it's a beautiful society that takes care not only of themselves, but other people. Right. This is the meaning. And right. it's beautifully been rendered. Again, when we look at it, in my modest opinion, this would be the lotus. And the lotus has, again, another beautiful meaning, almost for individual, purity. Why purity? Why purity has been decided? Now, let's imagine where the flower is born. It's born from a, muddy, from a muddy pond. But the moment it comes out from the water, it's purified. Yes. So purity, it would mean. But at the same time, it means rebirth. And what does rebirth mean? Is to get prepared to a new life, a different life. Right. And finally, enlightenment. I see. Again, the symbolism is not written, is just represented for the Buddhist to understand, and every Buddhist would be able to understand. So this chest, Tibet, 200 Tibet. years old, yes. a region that we are partly familiar with because yes. of the Tibetan chest. Yes. Uh, we will be having this in the last gallery. Mm -hmm. And you can come here because I don't think uh, Mr. Pino has all the time to actually go through all the details, but you can come here and experience it yourself. One thing for sure, if you want to feel, is that please be gentle because they're all antics. And please be gentle when you sit on this chair as well. They came over here last week to see the chair. Some of the way they see it, I'm a bit afraid, but you know, the old Chinese have their way of doing things. It's super sturdy. But please be gentle with all this thing. It cannot be bought, it cannot be replaced. Come and feel a little bit about the scales of the dragon. This is yes. one thing I want you to come and feel. It's great. And uh, you know, these two dragons facing a pole. Yes. Uh, somehow, I didn't know, I didn't even prepare all the things we're talk, going to talk about for this. It's that we have this signature ring that is created by Master Yun. Yes. There is actually two dragons facing Ooh. a pole. Do you know that? No, I didn't. Did you know that? No, I did not. I'll show no. you one. Yeah. How wonderful. How Mastini beautiful. Mastini created this. It's called Double Dragon Ring. So two dragons facing a pole. Amazing. Very, very beautiful. So it's, a, it's the same concept, apparently. We, I didn't know about this. I yes. just, when you say it, I just remember this. Yeah? And this is, one of, this is some of the rings that is actually put on the Corella Lamp, the Pillar of Light. So somehow, a connection again since many, many years ago. Okay, so we have something like this. This is from the familiar region, which is at Tibet. We know about this. And we are going to venture into another place that we have never talked about. Before we do that, may I add something? Sure. Almost insignificant, but worth mentioning. When I looked from the side, I see what I basically mentioned when we talked about the chairs. Okay. And that is the construction of the pieces. Right. Now we talk about mortise and tenon, which means you actually found a wonderful, simple word to describe it. I was more complicated. You said... You're, more, you're more professional. No, more it's not layman. a big... Can it's I say... <laughs> can I say... I wish I, I wish I had the opportunity to express it in such a simple but effective way. They came here to feel for it, I must yes. tell you. Yes. And they asked me the same question again. Yes. I say I'm not, as, I'm not as wise as the predecessors, but that's how it works, yeah? Yes. That's yes. the whole thing. What's the professional term again? Mortise and tenon. Mortise and, and tenon. tenon. Two words. Again, this is the English language that has defined them. But if we put this aside and we go to the substance and we go to a very simple representative word that would give everybody the idea is the Lego, the Lego system. How the two Danish things, well, yeah. how <laughs> things get together and yeah. they become solid. So when you come here, please take the time also to see the sides and you will see that in, on both sides, you will see this. Oh, yeah. Do you see it? No, I see it. Yeah. Yes. How the two words basically would come together and... Join. 
not only join, but would make the piece solid. No glue, no screw, is just the friction of two woods placed together. They're not as fine as the Chinese. They're not. I don't think... Well, yeah, but you know, sustained for 200 over years. Absolutely. That's something. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hopefully at the end of the world, sorry, yeah, probably <laughs> end of times, <laughs> probably a few things might survive, antiques like this with such carefully structured, uh, without nails, without uh, screws, and uh, probably Lego bricks might still survive there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, possibly. Totally joined together without no nails, with, without any nails, without any screws. It's amazing. They keep on asking me how is it done. I said, I'm really not that wise. Okay, just have great faith in our ancestors. Really? Not yeah. only, but they're beautiful books that one can just go through yeah. and see all the mechanism of putting together the various words. Uh, okay, speaking about books, uh, this museum in Lotus series uh, that we have, we expound on the amazing treasures that we have with the help of uh, Mr. Pino. Uh, eventually, we are going to make, in, make the condense them into uh, smaller episodes, like, like the, 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 the essence of it, smaller ones, maybe probably five minutes or ten minutes, the, the essence, and then we are going to make it into books as well. Good. We will it's be a wonderful idea. <laughs> wonderful idea. <laughs> we, and together with this wonderful treasure, shall be immortalized. So, this is the... Uh, Can I ask yes. you a question? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry if I do. No, go ahead, yeah. In your opinion, yeah. if you were to look at this finial, yep. what would this remind you? Well, the first thing, because, okay, this is episode six, right? Uh, the thing I like about doing this kind of episode is that I, I, I learn something that's out of my common day-to-day -day thing, right? So, this one looks a bit like the Sunok thing that we saw, you know, the top of the Sunok. Yes. The one that you offer flowers and uh, all this stuff on the 1st and 15th. So please yes. do it again this Friday. Come here with the flowers, offer it to the Pudas and so on. This thing looks like the top of the Sunok. Correct. So I remember, I'm a great student, honestly. Yeah, I'm a great student. When I was in college, I was the equivalent to a first class honours. Fantastic. Yeah, but back in Peking University, they didn't have such things. So I was the top in the school anyway. So <laughs> it's, we talked about, okay, it either represents the lotus. Fantastic. And all, also, it also all, it represents that, um, you know, there's some kind of high lama monks with their hats and their, their headgear with the whole thing on the top. Yes. Some of them say that it actually represents the top of the temple and how it looks. It's absolutely right. right. Yeah. But my take, yeah. and I 100% uh, subscribe to what you said, this is the lotus bud. The lotus bud, yeah. The lotus, and when you compare to the design all over, I tend to believe that this was possibly the reason. The lotus bud is something I explain to my cl clients and friends that it means that it's full of potential because it well, has not bloomed yet. Absolutely. It's the way to purity, as we said earlier, about uh, renewal, yes. rebirth and enlightenment. So All in the making. Uh, that's the reason why I believe that this may be the first part of the flower before. Because it's pretty redundant, huh? They can actually don't do this, huh? And the auto table will still work? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it's a feature of reminder. Right. Right. Okay. Tibet. Tibetan. Yes. Uh, we've talked about this several times. Uh, I'll recall Master Yin's paintings, work in progress, they're all in there. Uh, so it's a great thing. We're going to have it next to the Indian Dari chest. Come and pray on it. Uh, what do we have? There's four beautiful sculptures. It's from a region that we never talked about before. It's Laos. Let me say, Laos. Let me say I'm very lucky to, to share with you some of my thoughts uh, regarding this collection. Okay. Sublime. Sublime? Sublime in many, many ways. Uh, but also the way that these pieces have been collected. Right. Now, when we look at them, they're very, very simple. There's nothing too complicated. You look at the faces, simple. In a, in a nice way, I say this, farmers' faces. When you look at the Thai Buddhas, they're all very beautiful. I mean, they, 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 are, they are appealing. Yes. When you look at this, are they appealing? They are appealing to me because I can see when I went to Laos, the farmers' faces, and I don't see any distinction. Very prominent. Uh, um, sort of uh, uh, almond-shaped eyes, uh, 
And when you look at the eyebrows, are very evident, and you look at their nose, and you look at their lips, I can see all of that in these four beautiful figures. I'd like to start by commenting, uh, first of all, what is really the ocean, which we don't find anywhere else. It's the posture of one, two, and three. We have four. Yes. Just nicely. Oh, quite heavy. Deep wood. Uh, Deep wood, yes. Uh, four, just nice. We have four galleries, so probably you're a guest after this. I'll put it in the four galleries for this Friday. You can come here to admire it, to pray on it. Um, three of them, as you were mentioning, they share the same mudra. position. Yeah, mudra. It's mudra. It's hands by the side then. Yes. Hands by the side. Only one has hands like this. Yes. And um, this is called the double abaya. And I will e explain what the double abaya means. Sure. Let's focus for one minute on, uh, again, the simplicity, but the elegance. So here we're talking about faces that resemble, in my opinion, farmers. But look at the elegance. Yes. And the elegance, they have straight arms. They are pointing to the earth. Why are they pointing to the earth? They're asking, the Buddha is asking the earth to do something. Oh, OK. So what is the Buddha asking? is basically summoning the rain to come down. And I can imagine the moment where the farmers could not have enough water and there were droughts for years. And they needed to have enough water in order to cultivate their rice because otherwise they would not have enough food. Right. So they would just pray the Buddha and ask the Buddha, please Buddha, summon for the rains. So this position. Yes. It's a summoning for rain position. Correct. And therefore, the name of this Buddha is calling for the rain. It's a calling. This position, we don't see it in Chinese Buddhism, but it's a calling for rain position. F calling for the rain position. And uh, the three sculptures that we have here. Now, what else they have in common? They have the Anusha. Okay. which basically it's the representation of the enlightenment, all of them. When we look at each head cover, it's covered by 108 snails. You mean the little knots on his head? Correct. 108. There are 108 and I will just briefly explain why 108 and explain what do they represent. Okay, okay. Now again, this is narrative, but beautiful narrative. The Buddha is under a tree. There are sun rays, very strong, ready to scorch the naked head of the Buddha. Right. One of the snails recognizes the danger, does not want the Buddha to wake up from uh, the meditation. So even animals can recognize the status of the Buddha and be respectful. So this little nail went up the body of the Buddha to sit on his head to provide moisture and protection. A hundred and seven snail follow. He was completely covered. He could continue the meditation. And at the same time, when he came out from the meditation, he realized that in spite of the scorching rays of sun, he was not burned. I see. And so when he touched and realized, he realized that the snail did the miracle. And therefore, he also realized that the snail had died for him. I see. OK. Now, 108, it's also something very significant for the Tibetan in the sense that the human beings in their life would be challenged 108 times. And if they manage to overcome the challenges, uh, they will go to Nirvana. This, they all have the same thing. Right. So 108, huh? 108. Like my clients should be, I mean, you should be familiar with the number 108. We talk about 108 all the time. Chinese talk about 108 all the time. And uh, whether it's Buddhist or Taoist, this 108 is a significant number. Significant. So uh, even in uh, the collections that we have here, yes. a lot of them are according to the number of 108. The bracelets are 108. This, this is 108. 108. Yes. This 108. Uh, this is 108. I, I just want you to take a whiff of this, the smell. 
it's really good. It's full syncing aga wood, 108 bits. Uh, I don't have something else, so uh, <laughs> the rest are also out. So <laughs> may I take a look? You can take a smell, take a take a whiff of it first. Fantastic. What Mr. Pino has is a bit bigger size, this is a smaller size. 108. We know about the significance of 108 bits, and that's why we have beautiful. something like this. Absolutely beautiful. Because the what you said about uh, Buddhism believing in that a person will go through 108 obstacles. Uh, comes from the six senses times two times two times three. If I remember the formula correct, uh, I forgot why. But six it stands from the six senses. But even for the Taoists, the one zero eight is also significant. They have thirty six heavenly stars and seventy two earthly stars. Somehow they all form one zero eight. Hinduism as well. So it all connects. I think it was different cultures and faiths looking into the same skies and stars, and they realized the same thing. Yes. I just said the narrative is a bit different, but the words 108 is the same. I never thought that the, the ones on the Buddha's head were snails here. Yes, snails. But it's 108 snails. somehow. 108. Yeah. Absolutely. It's amazing. Amazing. It's so good. Yeah. So, look what they also have in common. We've said about uh, the Ushnusha, mm -hmm. we've said about the 108. We have this elongated ears. Right. Why the elongated ears? Let's not forget that the Buddha was a princely figure. And as a prince, uh, he would wear a lot of jewelry on his lobe. We don't see any jewelry here. Why? He relinquished them? Detachment. Right. Anything that was precious was not necessary. I also like how that when the years are long, they took pains to actually create such a 3D effect of it. 3D effect, uh, absolutely right. Now, when we look at the, they seem all to have uh, their eyes closed. As I mentioned, you, we will see the, this beautiful almond-shaped uh, eyes. The eyebrows are all very thick, okay? The nose is prominent. Look at the lips. They're almost smiling. And the one that is very evident in terms of a ha very happy face, uh, in my opinion, is this one. Very happy, yes, beautiful. Look at the cheeks. The cheeks are very similar to the cheeks of a child. And when you look at the cheeks of a child, uh, that will tell you immediately the happiness. Uh, yes. And together with uh, the beautiful smile. Now, also this one, very, very cute. One of the things that they have in common, before we talk about the double abaya, look at the stand. Okay. They're very tall, the stands. But why? The very tall stand mean the great respect for Buddhism and Buddha. Even the sizes of each of these uh, Buddha is almost less than the base itself. Right. So it's about respect, it's about honoring, it's about worshipping the Buddha. Now, let's look also at the robe that they are wearing. Very simple, almost unadorned. But when we look at the ones, actually all of them, look at the flare of the robe flanking from one side to the other. Simple. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these are cave uh, Buddhas. Okay. We can see clearly that there is gilding. If we were to clean, and I don't advise that this be ever done by anybody, if it's a genuine piece, we would see the gilding coming out. Gilding? Yes. What do you mean? There were basically uh, um, leaf of gold that were ah. applied after the Buddha had been treated with uh, lacquer. We can definitely see, but this one you have to come to the gallery to see yourself. So these four Buddhas, we'll be placing it in different galleries, uh, four galleries anyway, Yes. just nice. Yes. We're placing it in four different galleries. So on the 15th, which is this Friday, you can definitely come here to admire and to appreciate them. But if you look closer, actually for all of them, you can see the remnants of gold. Yes. Which is what you were saying. Yes. So simple as might be, the, what they did to the hair, what they did to the ears, and the gold. I think this culture is about, no, they don't go for all the details, they go for the important ones. That's yes. it. 
Yes. Yeah, because it was full of gold actually. Yes. Back in the past. Yes. So this is the one that's praying for rain. This is the one praying for the rain. Let's look at the importance of right. praying for the rain. This is the survival of people. And, and therefore praying and getting the rain was a blessing. Especially so that since majority of the people back then, uh, agricultural. Agriculture. Agriculture. This shares, a, you know, this shares the same thing with what the Chinese believes. Yes. Because uh, in the Chinese, there are also Hello Jewel and Wei Wei, Shannon, Madam Lai, Marilyn, Edwin. Wow, okay, lots of people. Yeah. Okay, so we are talking about, if you missed us earlier on, we were talking about this chest, which uh, is not spoiled. Don't worry. Mr. Pino just took a slice apart to show us what's going on. <laughs> He's confident that he can put it back. Yeah. <laughs> I am confident. Wait, wrong angle. It should be... No, it should be the other side. The other direction. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. <laughs> it I was, was that... Okay, so somehow there's a mechanism inside that allows it for to take it out easier. Yeah. Are you going to... Um, I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, I promise. Uh, we, we can always fix it back later. I, I can... Oh, there you have it. No, I don't have it uh, because the base is still... There we are. Ah. Oh. Please don't try it when you're here no, don't. because <laughs> Mr. Pino won't be in the gallery to fix it. And, uh, and I will I bark at you if I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't even charge you for it, you know. Uh, <laughs> the chest is from... The, the blessing cabinet and the blessing altar is of Tibet. Uh, and uh, which are f terrain we are familiar with, we covered that in episode 3, uh, this terrain. But uh, definitely for uh, this one, we have something that is different. These four sculptures are from Laos. Uh, different feel entirely for sculptures we have seen for the ones in Burma. Full. Everything was on. Even the flames and everything. 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 Burmese uh, towers are a bit different, more simple. But actually, you know, they are still very... Uh, have a great reverence for it because of the gold and all this thing. This tree that we talked about with the hands by our side is praying for rain, which in probably today's world, we can actually say that because in Chinese we have this thing. It's like there are four, there are four great joys. There are four great joys of the Chinese people. Uh, one is on the first night of marriage, Tong Fang Hua Su Second is you go for an exam, national exam. You're the top, you're the top scholar. In the Zhong Yuan Ji Di. It's great because it's official position. Third is that if you can go to a foreign land and you meet with someone from the hometown, Ta Xiang Yu Gu Zi, right? So if you come to Singapore, when did you come to Singapore again? When I came the first time. Yeah, the first time. The first 1990. time. 1990. 1990. So you came alone? I came alone, yes. So you came alone, I'm sure that when you came to Singapore, if somehow on the streets, on the roads, you heard people speaking Italian. I would have stop you bumped, them. Have you bumped into someone like? Have oh, you bumped into a situation like this? But I, I bump. I mean, sometimes I'm having a coffee, and near my table, there are people talking in Italian. I don't care who they are. I would just basically Ciao. introduce myself. Ciao, come yeah. stai? All this. Ciao word. is high, right? Ciao is high, yeah. and come stai? How, How are, are you? you? Yeah. And then we will start a conversation, which will never end yeah. unless you, somebody has an appointment. Yeah. Uh, I think back in the days, 1990, Yes. I mean, coffee is not that. No. Not that propagated as now. No, it it wasn't. Uh, but still, you could find. You still could find. Yeah. Yes. Probably, especially if you're having espresso, probably the next uh, table might just be Italian. Espresso so. would be very <laughs> difficult to find. Really? But back, yes. then. Yeah. back then, yes. So this is the feeling. Uh, you go to a foreign land and you meet someone from the hometown. It's called Ta Xiang Yu Gu Zi. The last one, the last joy is really about prosperity. It's uh, called Jiu Han from Gandu. Long time that's drop, And then suddenly there's sweet deals, which is, I suppose, what this is about. It's actually about prosperity. If you feel that your life has been stuck for quite a while, I don't think a lot of people are farmers now, but nonetheless, <laughs> your life is just stuck at the position for quite a while, and you want that breakthrough, you want that new lease of life, you want that new lease of prosperity. I think that's what this position means. Huh? Yes, yes. Right. So we have another one that has a totally different position. Okay, this one is, piece. Yeah. This is called the double abaya. Double abaya. But let's examine what the word abaya means. This is a Sanskrit word, fearlessness. This is what it means. Abaya means fearlessness.
fearlessness in, in Sanskrit. And now we have double of it. And now we have double of it. No now. fear, no fear. <laughs> no fear, no fear. Now, what does this mean? This means, again, calming the ocean. This hand sign itself means calming the ocean. Both? You need both? You need both. Because okay. I will uh, detour and uh, ex explain, actually more than explain, share with you about one of the hands is up or the other one is up. So that you are knowledgeable about the three different uh, mudras. This has both hands. Uh, again, look at the gentle way that the hands are up. Look at the, how beautifully the hands uh, have been carved. Notice the fingers, they're all at the same level. Again, yes. And then when you look at the thumb, is the only one which is not at the same level. Yes. When we look at the construction of this beautiful Buddha, to me is the work of two beautiful crafters, not one. And I explain why. If you look at the torso, and you look at the nipples, uh, yeah. they're exaggerated uh, in this particular example versus the others. Uh, You're right, yeah. And therefore, my take is that a younger carver which were, who was offered the possibility of starting did something wrong. Oh. They didn't want to touch it. They left it as it is. Uh, and then somebody else continued because these hands, the way they've been carved, uh, is just uh, exceptional. Now, again, Features which they all have in common, basically the 108 snails and the elongated yes. ears, the beautiful dress. Yep. Now, just the heads. Coming the ocean. What does that mean, coming the ocean? I can just think that in certain period of the year, there would be floods. And the heavy floods would take and destroy the harvest, would destroy the rice that had been planted. Yes. Well, so sure. again, the Buddha is summoning the, to come the ocean. Right. Beautiful significance again. Now, let's touch on when there's only one hand in exactly the same position, but just one hand, and we have to talk about the right hand. What is the coming the lake instead of the ocean? No. <laughs> Not a lake. <laughs> it has several meanings. Uh, and in my opinion, all very beautiful. Okay. It's about peace. The right hand, it's about peace. It's about protection. Okay. So Mr. Pino is talking about when the Buddha raises the hand, both hands are coming the ocean mudra. Yes. One hand, the right hand, is about peace. It's about peace. It's about protection. It's about benevolence. And it's about dispel of fear. Now, look at the four significant element. I mean, this very day, we can say the same thing, and it would work for any religion, in my opinion. It would work for any human being. We want peace. We want protection. We need to have an environment where we don't have fear. We would be in heaven. But unfortunately, this is not the case. So at that time, this is what the Buddha represented. Now let's talk about the left hand. Okay. Very rare to find one with the left hand. What the, the left hand indicated. Now let's try to understand in Laos and the kind of communities that we had. We had small villages. Okay. And small villages, okay, were inhabited uh, by relatives. Right. And when you think about relatives, uh, when they are all in the same place, they would have reason to fight. The Buddha... No need to question about that, that's for sure. Even no, today, no, yeah, I'm not sure. You try, you try staying with your in-laws, you try staying with three families in under one roof, yeah? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this was common, and therefore the Buddha stepped in and uh, again, summoned uh, relatives uh, not to fight. Why? Mm. Because sometimes, and this is the narrative, uh, it was about rights to water. Now, let's think each one has a field, each one has to grow, yes. each one would want as much as possible the water in order to have the maximum 
amount of harvest uh, that is possible. So, again, the Buddha stepping in and advising. Let's see the effect on the people. They knew that if they had disobeyed to the guidelines, they would not be blessed. I see. And this is how society, and especially ruler society, and Laos was all ruler society, would have an understanding of the relationship between relatives. I mean, how hard it is to have quarrels with relatives I mean, they burn your heart. This is where the Buddha steps in and with tells his left them, hand. Sorry? With his left hand. With his left hand and okay. say, no quarrels, uh, no dispute. And then, again, when I just mentioned before, peace and uh, dispel of fear and benevolence, all beautiful attributes that each one of us in the common life should have. We don't need to be Buddhist or not Buddhist, but some concepts are so universal and so beautiful. Yes. So two hands coming the ocean. Coming the ocean. Right hand, it's about what again? Peace. Peace. The left hand is about appeasing of uh, or resolving of conflicts. Relatives. Relatives. So we see two kinds of mudras or the different hand signs. Um, quite an yin yang, huh? quite a yin and yang. Absolutely. So two the hands by the side is to bring in prosperity because there was not enough rain. Yes. I mean two hands here, that means it's too much rain or too much uh, flooding. Water. So you need to balance it out to stop Blood the whole thing. Flooding. This whole balancing of, um, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. But Fortunately, we have all these different mudras in the gallery. So once again, we're going to place these four in different galleries. They were asking the other time, you know, when we have the Burmese Medicine Buddha, which one should they pray to first? I'm just thinking, doesn't take a lot of time. We'll pray to all of them, yes. right? Two Medicine Buddha, one was Sikamuni with the hand touching the ground. So it makes a lot of sense now that you want to go to every single gallery this Friday to offer your flowers in the Sunok, in the Suwet, to the medicine Buddha, we're still going to place it there. Yes. We're not taking it away yet. And these four beautiful sculptures from Laos that represents prosperity, praying for prosperity to come and to resolve uh, conflicts and bring in peace. Yes. Sometimes too much water is not good. Yes, not good. Anything yeah. that is over and above what we need is just not good. Yes, right. What a beautiful collection and uh, what a, a, a very fine eye in choosing these pieces. Uh, Yes. So I'm, I'm very lucky to be able here tonight to look and to give my and to share my views with you. Thank you. The bringing in prosperity that we know, that is actually pretty much our specialty. <laughs> the rings with two dragons, that brings in. The one zero agar bridge, that brings in as well. Uh, when it comes to resolving conflicts and uh, peace and to, you know, between relatives, you know, that kind of thing, calm the oceans. Um, last week, when we talked about the Qing Dynasty chess, do you remember that we talked about the white ink stone? Yes, we the did. The one that we said that we went yes. through a huge paragraphs, and the reviewer said that was only used by the emperor back in the past. It can only uh, it means authority, it means strength, it means all this stuff. But uh, there's a counterpart to it. Yes, I think we briefly mentioned. Probably we mentioned during the episode when we we're doing the Kerala Lamb as well. Uh, that's uh, the the counterpart that is uh, more in abundance. It's called the black inkstone. Yes. Or the black tuan inkstone, yes. to be specific. So I will spare you with the boring details. But the fact is that, uh, yes, just like this Buddha with this coming the oceans, hand sign, the mudra, uh, the black inkstone is around to actually help us to resolve conflicts. Is it? Yes. Can I give you an example why? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do I have? I'll let you hold the, the better one, the more expensive one. <laughs> I will hold on to the bigger one for the camera effect. Oh my god, it's so heavy. It's a black Tuan Ink Stone. It's a black Tuan Si Ink Stone. It's from the Tuan River, which means that it's from Guangdong and Guangxi area. Um, do you know that in the past, when they, everyone has to give gifts to the emperor in the past? For sure. I mean, if it's the emperor's birthday, you don't give a gift, you die. <laughs> or you, <laughs> you would just 
you, as you can kiss goodbye to the rest of your political <laughs> career. That would be stupid of you. So you've got to give a gift. Uh, what I know from historical perspective was that now everyone would take what is best from their region, yes. all the officials, to give to the emperor. And somehow by the time of Song Dynasty, after so many emperors, then they, everyone pretty much know what your expertise are. So we know that ginseng is from yes. the northeast of China. Right. Can you grow ginseng elsewhere in China? Probably yes, but maybe not as nice. So it would be stupid of you to compete with people in the northeast. Yes. Right. Um, Guangxi has good lychee. There are a lot of stories about it. I'll spare you the juicy stories today. Uh, so they will offer lychee. Right. And they have to do it in such a way that by the time you reach Beijing, it's still fresh. Yes. Smart people. Um, what else do they have? Um, Korea, which was one of the vassal state of China back then. They will offer either ginseng, if not beautiful girls. They do it in movies all the time, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Guangdong and Guangxi River, they, 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 they have a river called Tuan River, which uh, the bedrock stone, or the tough rock, T-U-F-F, would be able to come up with something like this. And um, what they say is that if you put ink on it, if you grind ink on it, in summer, it doesn't evaporate so fast. In winter, it doesn't... Uh, it, won't fro it won't freeze and become ice so fast. It has a way to regulate the chi or the temperature around it. And uh, when people grind it, they feel that they are much more at peace and calm. Really. So next time when you feel that you're going to flare up and send an angry email to someone, or send a stupid WhatsApp message to someone, or post something stupid on social media, take out the black ink stone, grind it, and go have a cup of champagne. How wonderful. <laughs> you don't need it. You're a very calm person. You're a very nice person. I might need it more. So what you're having there, it's one of the better ones. Because they say that when you choose a black ink stone, don't talk about the size, but it's about how smooth it is. You feel yours and you feel this one I have. This is a top quality. Yours is better. You can feel it. You can feel it. Yours is more smoother. Yes. Right? You're right. They're all top grade. In fact, they're so top grade that the people in Beijing can't even compare to this. But yours is smoother than mine. Beautiful. Yeah. Come the oceans. Am amazing. Really amazing. So if anyone wants to steal your water, like what food I was trying to stop, maybe you can get them to actually grind the black inkstone first. Yeah. <laughs> Resolve the conflicts. The white one that we talked about last week was more about, you know, something conflicts, no choice. You have to win those conflicts. But many a times... Uh, as one grows older, one realizes that you don't have to win every single battle. Some battles you just have to resolve. And this is where this black ink stone comes into play. Right? Oh, there we have it. Uh, Laura and many other friends are here. Okay, may I? So, one. Oh, this is. Amazing. You feel it. It's entirely different. Now, uh, for sure, I want to repeat one more time these Tibetan chairs or these Tibetan cabinet with the blessing altar, uh, which definitely you have to come and feel yourself. The details are most amazing and it was used by definitely a high priest in the past. We are going to place it at the Indian dowry chest next to it. Uh, so we're going to have all the equipment that you can use for prayers to it. You can use it, feel it, experience it. Let the antics come to life. Let it be part of what you experience here. And the four sculptures will allow us, three of them praying for rain, for prosperity. One of them calming the oceans, resolving conflicts, bringing peace and harmony. This four, one of them will be in each category, uh, which means this Friday, the 15th the lunar month, much more significant. I really encourage you to bring some simple flowers over here, come over here, offer it to them, uh, to the medicine Buddha from Burma as well, and you know, admire them and see the detail details that me and Mr. Pino were sharing about. We're very lucky to be here and to see all the four Laotian Buddhas together with this Absolutely. beautiful cabinet. What a beautiful setting. And Master, Master, Yun's. Master Yun, basically wonderful paintings. Yes. And look also at the colors, they way, the way they basically go one into the other. It's most, almost like Maltais and Tenen. Good fit, way of saying it. Fit together. Brilliant beautiful legal. Yeah. Uh, we are not going to, don't worry, don't text me so fast. We are definitely not going to remove the Qing Dynasty chairs. 
because these are my favorites. Uh, I still like to sit here and talk to people, feel like king and queens. We're just going to remove this, put back the table. The chairs will still be here. You can come here. You can continue to take photos with this set of chairs and tag us on Lotus of Water slash Inong Zilong Tsai Kwan. But of course, I'm sorry the deadline has passed, so I won't be giving you any more Lohong Perry Champagne. Oh, For what now. a pity. What yeah. a pity. Yeah, but you can always have the red wine here. It's from <laughs> France anyway. They're good red wine. Yeah, they drink a lot of red wine here. Good. Did I tell you that Lohong Perry Champagne in Asia, their biggest client, the biggest country, do you know where it is? Mm, I don't have a clue. I'm sorry. It's Japan. Japan? I didn't know Japanese actually drink a lot, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I thought it was Korea. <laughs> <laughs> no, Japan is the number one uh, client in, uh, the China, uh, in Asia for Lohong Perry Champagne. And the second biggest client is not a country. It's an entity, and that's Lotus on Water. Wow. It's crazy, huh? It's crazy. Your audience I didn't care about the third one because it's third, yeah. Audience benefiting uh, of uh, the possibility of uh, they, they get drinking a lot of, uh, this wonderful champagne. Yeah, they get a lot of Lohan Perry champagne for me because every $10,000 they buy, they get yes. a bottle, they get a full bottle of Lohan Perry champagne. Oh, they can wonderful. drink it, they can give it to clients and friends, it doesn't matter. I have one company. Uh, who's my client, very good client, knew me for three years. And um, recently I called the CEO and I said that, please don't buy any gifts for uh, the, the, the Christmas for your clients because on my records, you have about 96 bottles of Lohan Perry Champagne. You haven't taken any of them. Please consume them. Please take them away and spread the good joy. Wonderful. So, yeah. What a great gift. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you had a great episode today Thank as well. You. We're going to put this to good use. Come here and experience it. Make the entities come to life. Let it be part of you. Now, similarly, next week, next Tuesday, we're going to have our seventh episode of Museum in Lotus with Mr. Giuseppe Diosa. Mr. Pino is going to share with us something else from another country. I look very much forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the enjoyment you've given me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers one more time. Yes. What does it say cheers in Italian? Yeah. Salute. Oh, it's the same in France. French, yeah. Yes, salute, salute which mm. means good health. <laughs>